You are a dancer, it appears, or at least you like to move, whether or not you consider yourself a dancer. I thought it might be useful to give you some poi theory in context of the turning matrix, which I have, you, you maybe understand it on a, on a basic level, but I thought it might be useful to do just a little bit with it. So for example, you know your overhand weave, you know your clockwise pinwheel, you know your underhand weave, and you know your anti-clockwise pinwheel, right? Have you practiced doing what I just did where I move between all four of those like that? We'll do it real quick. So this is the overhand weave on your right side. When the right hand comes over the top, you turn to the left and you'll come into your clockwise pinwheel. And then you can turn back to overhand weave. So that's the first pair, overhand weave to clockwise pinwheel. Then if you come back down to overhand weave and you turn to your right, which means you would be turning away from me, you would turn into anti-clockwise pinwheel. And then when you turn back to the left, you'd go back to overhand weave. So that's the second pair. From overhand weave, turning right to counterclockwise. And from counter, from counterclockwise, turning left, back to overhand weave. Okay, now let's go from overhand weave left to clockwise. Now, we'll do the pair from clockwise pinwheel to underhand weave by turning left. And then go back to the right to clockwise pinwheel. Clockwise to underhand, underhand to clockwise. Clockwise to underhand, underhand to clockwise. And then the last pair is you're in underhand here and you can turn left away from me to anti-clockwise or counterclockwise and turn back to the right from counterclockwise to underhand weave. So it's underhand to counterclockwise turning left and then from counterclockwise you turn right to underhand weave. So if we were to go all four turns around the circle starting from underhand, we're in underhand, we're gonna turn right, we'll go to clockwise. If we're gonna turn right, we'll go to overhand. We'll turn right, we'll go to counterclockwise, so you'll be facing away from me. Turn right one more time, back to underhand. Now we'll do the left turn, we'll go to counterclockwise, facing away from me. Turn left again, facing the left side here, and you're in overhand. And then turn again to clockwise, and one more turn back to where you started into underhand weave. Okay, that is your same direction turning matrix, turning 90 degree turns using pinwheels and weaves. However, you could use any kind of moves. You could use like your four petal flower, four petal flower, four petal flower, four petal flower, four petal flower. That was the left turns. This is right turns. Okay, so I started this out with the four pedal in spin, but then I turned and I turned into the four pedal anti spin. That is more complicated, but you could do, we could do something simple like two pedal flowers, which if you don't know the flowers, you can't do the moves, but I'll demonstrate it with a two pedal flower version. So this is a vertical, side plane two petal flower. So underhand here like this. And now I'll do a two petal barrel roll here and a two petal here. And then a two petal barrel roll there. And then a two petal here. And then I could turn right to a two petal to a two petal. And now the last turn the two pedal and then to this two pedal back to where I started so it works for any moves that's the order of how it works and you're just preserving the direction of the circle yeah so let's look at the opposite direction turning matrix because it's this you have the same deal so you could be facing overhand opposite this way so like you're in an overhand opposite butterfly and then you could turn to here, and then you could be like in an opposite direction for petal flower. Then you could turn here into an underhand butterfly or an underhand flower, uh, is turning away, and then you could turn again to this opposite direction flower. So the same thing applies in opposite direction as applies in same direction. 
where you can go all around the matrix. Now the question is, you're in an opposite direction move and you're in the same direction or you're in the same direction move, how do you get from one matrix to the other? So uh, you have to do something to change the momentum direction of one of the poi, right? So these are both overhands. That's not gonna work for opposite direction. If I wanna be in the opposite direction matrix, I could do something like a stall, do a stall, zhunk. Okay, that put me in opposite direction. Or I'm in the same direction and I could do a tap. Or I'm in same direction and I could do a spiral. Or I'm in same direction and I could do a toss. All of those will get you from same direction to opposite direction. Similarly, you could use all of those same techniques and those are not the only techniques because you could do, like in the old days, the most common thing that I would see people do, and I think this is absolutely a terrible thing to perform this way, but people would do this. They'd weave here which, and then they would plain bend both poi into the butterfly like this. So I think the butterfly performed like this is cool, but I think you should be performing the weave in general like this, so you're preserving the circle for the audience. So it's much more elegant, in my opinion, to do something like that stall. Or do, even if you stop the poi, turn, and go into it, I think that's more elegant, right? Then jamming it, although, I, I mean, maybe that's not, Maybe that's not fair because like my, my plane bending here was pretty sweet. Like that was clean, but you still don't have the circles for the weave here, which I think is doing the audience a disservice generally, unless the caveat being, unless you're spinning in the round. And then somebody's always getting something, so it's okay. 